Hello YouTube friends. Welcome to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I'm making one of my favourite quilt blocks, the Flying Goose block. Now I've made this a few times and I did a full tutorial on the channel and we'll make sure we leave a link to that in the description below. But every time I've made a Flying Goose quilt, I've given it away. <laughs> so I decided it was time that I should have one for me to keep. So I've got loads and loads of greens here you won't be surprised and then I'm going to find all my favorite pinks and reds uh, and make this no waste flying goose block which is where you make four at a time so let's make some blocks now I want to introduce you to the last homely house quilt planning notebook which is uh, the newest product in the shop I'm really thrilled with it. My daughter-in-law Anna and my daughter-in-law Rita both helped me work on it and I really like this page because this <laughs> is the um, pattern that I'm doing now. Now there are um, in the book there are all sorts of um, well there's lots of pictures of my quilts which I'm really uh, enjoying and but there are some cheat sheets <laughs> for how to make different blocks and that's the one that I'm making today, this four at a time flying geese. And then you'll find that you've got space to write, space to design, and um, I think there's even a lovely shopping list in here too. But this is the one I'm making today, the flying goose quilt. And I'm choosing a, a, a large square, which is five and a quarter inches. And then I need four small squares, which are two and seven eighths. And so I'm not offering this as a tutorial, because I've made this before but this is what I'm going to do now is just stitch these together like so but I do need to draw a line on there now I know some people fold this and do a finger crease and that would work fine as well absolutely fine but I like to draw a line so that's what I'm going to do okay so bear in mind if you're making this that the large square is the goose and the small squares are the sky. <laughs> now I'm just going to do a corner to corner on these two here. And then I'll choose a different green I think for this one. How about, what have we got here? I cut quite a lot of these because I want to make a fair size quilt, maybe a single size quilt something to throw over the back of a sofa or something. So that green looks nice with that, doesn't it? So let's have a couple of those. Yeah, that's good. So we'll just draw our diagonals on there as well. And then we'll pop to the sewing machine and sew these together. But I will give you a, a quicker, a, a better look through the quilt planning notebook so that you can see what's going on in here. So that's the page that I'm working on now. But if we start at the beginning, Kate's book says, <laughs> and all the quilts that are in here are, are quilts that I've made over the years. And so this one is made of shirts here. And of course, we've got a little background of Agnes's quilt there. It wouldn't be a quilt notebook without a bit of Agnes's quilt. And then... That's the uh, trip around the world block I made with K facet fabric. And what I thought I would do uh, with this book, um, when I print out pictures of my finished quilts or have swatches of fabric that I want to use, I might just stick them over these pages so that it becomes a proper, proper scrapbook. It'd be interesting to see this in a, a few months time when I've designed quite a number of quilts in here. But that was a, a scrappy quilt I made a number of years ago. And then this one that we're making today. And then we've got this St. Louis 16 patch, which is a, a quilt that I really enjoyed making from Anna Maria Horner fabric. And it was my daughter-in-law, Anna, who got me interested in Anna Maria Horner fabric, for which I'm very grateful. Lots of space to do your planning and writing and photos and so on. That's a, a fly, another flying goose there. And lovely teals. What have we got here? 
Now this one is uh, was a half square triangle quilt that I challenged myself to make because um, it's the first time I'd made this particular block and I wanted to make sure I didn't lose any of my points. And if you get a copy of this book, you can have a look and see if I actually managed to do that. I think I did because I was concentrating really hard on doing that. <laughs> So what else have we got? Now that was the string quilt that my mum made. And if you remember way back to that f series that I made about um, finishing my mum's quilts, then this was um, the string. This is the one I kept for myself. And we sent these quilts up to Kath, the long arm quilter, who lives just over the border in Scotland. And she long arm quilted this in an absolutely beautiful pattern. It's absolutely lovely. And then there's uh, another quilt that I'm planning there. And then at the very back, this was a, a sort of a take on the Dresden plate quilt that I made a number of years ago. And then some useful um, quilt sizes there. So all in all, I think um, there's, uh, there's lots to look at, but there's also lots to um, jot down and write and keep records for yourself. So I hope you enjoy using it as much as I am. Right, back to this page then. And I'm making, I don't know quite how many I'm making yet, but uh, I'll put a few blocks together and we'll put them on the board and see what that all looks like. I've done my marks now, so we'll go to the sewing machine with these next. You can put a pin in if you like. I might, <laughs> just to keep them nice and straight. Okay, let's get sewing. So I've finished these um, individual geese now, but what's important to do now is to trim them up. If I was just to sew those together now, they wouldn't be a very consistent size. And a number of years ago, I went to the Festival of Quilts and I bought this amazing um, little ruler, which is it's a block block thing. I'm not sponsored by these people at all, but I really do like this little block lock ruler. And I'll show you how it works. Um, it's got grooves in the back of it and you fit it over your goose and you push it so that you know that those are sitting there and then everything that's sticking out the other end is to trim off and it does make for such a neat block. I really like how accurately you can um, make your geese with this ruler. 
should get them to sponsor me, shouldn't I? So all these, just these tiny little pieces trimmed off here, the dog ears and so on, it makes for a really neat and tidy flying goose. So I'm going to do that with all of these now. Just push it so that you can feel it's there. And then trim all these little bits off. And then I'm going to sew the four of them together. So we've only got these tiny little scraps that I've trimmed off, but it really will make for a much more accurate block. So let's go and sew those together now. Now, I, when I sew my sets together, I keep all four of them in the same set. But of course, you can mix them up if you want to. I just like these runs of flying geese all in the same colour. And the simple tip to not lose your point here, because you want your flying goose to have a beak and the tip about that is to place these right sides together and always sew with the point on the top so that you can see that you're not actually going through it and I go one thread the other side of it and it might mean that it's a very scant quarter inch indeed but when I get to that tip there I know that I'm not going to lose my point and it is quite nice not to lose your point. <laughs> so I'm just going to sew some more of these together now. I really like sewing this block together. There's a certain degree of accuracy that means you get a really nice block. And so if you've enjoyed watching this video, it's great if you want to give it a thumbs up. Thank you. And subscribe if you haven't and click the notifications bell and then you'll never miss when I post a new video here to The Last Homely House. And let me know in the comments below if you like the flying goose block as much as I do. I really enjoy this block. Do you sew it together though? Because I sew it together in runs of four like this. And maybe, maybe I should think about mixing it up. That's an interesting way to do it as well. Look, if you sew it together like this, with two going up and two going across, that's a really interesting way to do it. So many ways to lay out this block and I'm going to sketch them all out in my design book. For now though, I like this runs of four, so I'll carry on doing these. I haven't got anything like enough blocks made but it is really nice to see them all up here. And do you ever do that thing when you've got a design that you like where you photograph it and then put it into grayscale? Because that gives you a really good idea if you've got the distribution of lights and darks. I, I do that every quilt I make and it's a, a really, really useful tool. So I'm just going to choose these lovely blocks, they're all very different, aren't they? And I'm wondering, does it matter that I have the same green next to the same green like that? No, I don't think it does matter. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep putting these up here.
Well, I'm really loving how these colours all look together, but I'm going to have to make a lot more blocks in order to make the size quilt that I want. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day. And if you would like a copy of the quilt planning notebook, they're over in the shop now and the link will be in the description below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon with something else. And then my son John turned up, so if you're still watching, enjoy this little bit of silliness. Alright everyone, I watched uh, Mother's latest video last night with um, Ma Anna and Mother grafting away at their quilts. And there was this old section about how hard it is to arrange these blocks. It's not hard at all, you just lay them all out. I don't know what they what they what they were complaining about. I I made this pattern in about a minute, and now I didn't quite like it, so I'm making a different pattern. And they were they were going on that it would take them uh, like a, a whole afternoon. What do you think? Straight away, look, quilt in done. Easy. I suppose sewing all the all the parts together isn't easy, is it? Like I couldn't I couldn't make all these lines. I did try, but mother doesn't like me going on a good sewing machine. She thinks I'm gonna smash it. <laughs> this is probably true. So I'll leave this on here for her when she comes back and then she can uh you know she's uh, she doesn't need to do this step now. I've saved her all that afternoon. <laughs> there you go. And there's two left over which she's not going to need, so. <laughs> See us.